Hi everybody! So, solar cells are pretty remarkable things. I mean, not at the beginning, of course, when you're looking at things like copper oxide cells, their efficiency was, well, pants in the region of sort of 4%. But of course, with the advent of silicon and with improvements in manufacturing, quality of materials, stability of the crystal structure, you're getting 18 to 22% efficiencies, which are quite remarkable. And of course, enter the perovskites, which are showing sort of 25%. They have issues with their stability, but of course, research is ongoing. But at the top of the solar, you're looking at things like tandem cells, where they're layering up materials to capture different parts of the light spectrum and in research conditions they're approaching 30% efficiency which is astounding when you think that the solar cell limit is fixed by the Schottky barrier which is around about 33.7% as being the limit of the efficiency of a solar cell and they're quickly approaching that limit which is astounding when you think about it. But of course, as a product, a solar cell is just one part of energy storage. You've got the cell itself, and of course you've got all the structure, the cables, the actual way of charging a battery and storing that in a battery. And that part can be very much more expensive than just the solar cells themselves. So it would be great if there's a way that solar could be its own battery and recharge itself. And unsurprisingly, research is ongoing into that very area. It quite possibly began with this paper. What these guys discovered was that if you take a blueprint, which is something that all technical drawings were at one time, and leave it, it'll go white. <laughs> That doesn't sound astounding until you connect it up to a couple of electrodes and it will give that energy back out. The energy it took to make it white will give and be given back out to do work and it will go back to blue. So they constructed a solar cell out of this to test that effect, to see whether the sun's energy could do that and store that energy until you wanted to use it. So effectively, a solar cell stroke battery that charges itself in the sun. Now that material is called Prussian blue and Prussian blue is stunningly easy to make all by yourself and it's completely innocuous. To make Prussian blue we need one of two things okay so here we have some potassium ferrocyanide which is the K4 version and for that we need an iron 3 salt like iron chloride so it's that way then there's this one which is the potassium ferricyanide which is the K3 version and for that we need an iron 2 salt like iron sulfate this is a fertilizer incidentally we're going to use that one because actually it's much cheaper than this one now, if we make up some solutions, there is my potassium uh, ferricyanide, there is my sulfate, and this is a three molar solution of potassium chloride, which we're going to use as the electrolyte. And to make this, what we're going to use is some coffee filters. Now, I've cut the filters into little strips like this, because to be honest, this bit is almost magical. The first thing you do is dip it in there and dry it. But let me give you a close-up of some of this, because I just love it. Okay, step one dip it in the ferricyanide, the yellow solution, and just let it soak into the filter paper and you get this beautiful yellow paper. Now we dry that. Once we've dried it, that's what we get. <laughs> this is the beautiful bit. When I dip it in there, it's gonna go bright blue um, immediately. Now there's an excess of iron in here because we're not after the colloidal version, we're after the insoluble version. So here we've got one molar, here we've got an excess of it, it's two molar actually. And if we dip it in there, Look at that, isn't that beautiful? It immediately goes this deep blue color and that is Prussian blue. And of course, once we've done that, we dry it and we get that, which is Prussian blue paper. Now, this is insoluble, completely harmless. What, nothing will happen to it and this is how they made blueprints. We're going to use that as the base of our battery. So I've got myself a bit of aluminium and I've stuck it on this big bit of plastic so basically I can cart it around without having to worry about it. We put a separator paper on the aluminium and then we soak that separator paper with our potassium chloride solution. We take our Prussian blue and put that on. Top. So on the other side what I've got is a bit of stainless steel mesh. Now it's not brilliant but it is better than nothing because it has see-throughness. To it, but if we put that on there, what we'll get is a voltage. There we go. 
going to put it on voltage. Okay, so it starts off about 0.8 of a volt on this particular thing, and as that discharges, then that Prussian blue will go white. Now it doesn't need the sun at this stage, so I've stacked a load of weights on it just to make sure we get good contact, and I've put a supercapacitor on, and you can see there the voltage rising, because I'm reading the voltage across, across this supercapacitor, which means this little cell is now charging that supercapacitor. And it's doing that because the aluminium is assisting with the oxidation of the Prussian blue to Prussian white. So after some time that has bleached. Now it was ages and it gave out a low slow amount of power for that whole time. Now all we've got to do is put it into the sun and it'll go blue again. So we're back to this. This is a long slow process. Eh? We left that in the sun and it's gone blue like a blueprint would and we're now ready to reconnect it and we'll get it to discharge again. So I noticed I left the backlight on on the meter. I'm sorry about that. I'll make sure that I don't do that again. But you can either take my word for it or repeat the experiment or read the research paper. And I'll put the link to the research papers, two of them actually, in the description below. And um, they are open access. So anybody can read them if they want to and replicate exactly what I did. Now it's an exciting field because although it's still, like everything, has its issues, which is why it's still in research, it is coming along leaps and bounds and it found its birth in um, chromic windows, electrochromic windows, but it is also being developed developed as a battery technology. Anyway, I thought I would share that with you. I hope you found it interesting and exciting. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.